Today, luxury car maker Bentley cruising to its second year in a row of record sales, leaving other car makers in the dust. Multiple cruise lines canceling trips as virus cases hit passengers and hurt travel demand. Which lines are they? And Walmart expanding its grocery delivery service, putting food directly into your fridge. But would you use the service? We ask some New Yorkers. That and much more coming up on NTD Business. Good evening. Great to have you with us. I'm Paul Graney. One of the most luxurious car brands in the world is having another record year. Bentley says it sold around 15,000 high-end vehicles in 2021. That's up from an already record-breaking 11,000 cars sold the year before, despite the pandemic. The 100-year-old car maker headquartered in England said sales rose the most in the Americas and China, making up 60% of its total sales. Bentley credits the success to its new car models, including hybrids, its entry-level SUV starts at around $200,000, while some of its more exclusive models can go for around $2 million. It's also planning to go fully electric by the year 2030. And Nike is suing Lululemon over patent infringement. It's accusing its small arrival of selling the Mirror home gym and related apps without authorization. In the complaint, Nike accused Lululemon of infringing on six patents, including technology that enables users to target specific levels of exertion, compete with other users, and record their own performance. Nike seeking triple damages. Lululemon bought Mirror in July of 2020. It rejects Nike's claims, saying the patents are overly broad and invalid. Cruise lines had hoped for a better year in 2022, I think we were all expecting it, It hasn't started well. Royal Caribbean and Norwegian Cruise Line have both cancelled some voyages this week. That's as resurgent virus cases hit passengers and sapped demand. Royal Caribbean cancelled one sailing after nine guests were identified as close contacts of a person who tested positive. Those passengers all later tested negative the ship had returned to port to test everyone on board. Norwegians also cancelled sailings. The cruise line, which requires everyone on board to be vaccinated, also had to cut short one trip from Miami due to health concerns. It says people booked on affected sailings will receive full refunds and bonus credits. Last week, the CDC recommended against going on cruises. Omicron has also forced the world's biggest consumer technology show to scale down, with some of tech's biggest names missing from the Las Vegas Strip this week. But still underway in hybrid format, setting the year's tech trends in real life and online. The show must go on. That's the approach by CES, the global annual tech showcase hosted by the Consumer Technology Association. So bringing people together this week hopefully lets us solve future problems and again, getting us living, working, playing better, all thanks to technology. After an all virtual show last year, CES was supposed to return to full form on the Las Vegas Strip this week, but Omicron had other plans. Big names such as Amazon, Meta and Google are participating virtually. On the floor, which requires being vaccinated and masked, are names like Samsung, showing off a more affordable addition to its Galaxy S21 family of smartphones with the Galaxy S21 FE and the Freestyle, a tiny home projector for movies, TV, and more. Beyond big names, CES spokesperson Allison Freed says in-person connections at the show are vital to small companies. This is their time to shine. These are people who have brilliant, innovative ideas that are trying to get it to market. And that market is at CES. That includes more in the fitness and health arena in the COVID-19 era. Telemedicine, digital therapeutics, Remote patient monitoring systems is a big deal right now as sensor technology is getting smaller and smaller. The show will wrap up on Friday, one day earlier than initially planned. One highlight from the CES show is a spacecraft from Sierra Space. It's designed to carry crew and cargo to and from low Earth orbit. Francesca Lina has more on what it could mean for commercial space travel. Could this dream chaser spacecraft herald a new dawn in commercial space travel? 
Showcased at this year's Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, the Dream Chaser will start off with NASA cargo missions, but it's also being remodeled to carry humans too. The space plane is being developed by Colorado-based Sierra Space, the spaceflight wing of defense contractor Sierra Nevada Corporation. John Roth is Sierra Space's vice president of business development. And behind me you see our Dream Chaser space vehicle and we have a contract for seven missions to the International Space Station to be able to take cargo up to the space station as well as science experiments and return those science experiments to the Earth. The company has also signed a deal with Blue Origin to help build a private space station for commercial use called Orbital Reef. And it's going to be a totally commercial space station that we own and operate and work with commercial businesses for realizing their commercial businesses in space. Blue Origin hopes Orbital Reef will be a hub for commercial industries such as manufacturing, entertainment, sports, gaming and adventure travel in addition to being a home for crewed and cargo missions. And with the so-called space race heating up, the designers of the Dream Chaser are hoping their reusable space vessel will also help launch a new era in the commercialization of space exploration and travel. The Dream Chaser spacecraft is expected to have its maiden space voyage at the end of 2022. Are your days busy? You're looking for some slack? What if I told you your fridge could magically replenish itself without you having to go to the grocery store? It's not quite there yet, but almost. Walmart is expanding its in-home delivery service, which means they could soon deliver directly to your fridge. In theory's Evelyn Lee asked people what they think. Walmart thinks that grocery shopping isn't convenient enough, so the retailer says it will deliver straight to the fridges of up to 30 million households by the end of the year. If you live in Los Angeles and Chicago, for instance, you won't have to make that trip to the grocery store anymore. I mean, it's like, it saves a lot of time, in my opinion. First of all, the service is good, but I'll tell you, to buy food, I like to see what I'm buying. Here's how the in-home delivery works. You can subscribe to the service online, so when you order, you can choose that as a delivery option. Then Walmart's employees deliver to your fridge by entering through a smart lock or keypad. While delivering, employees will wear a body cam so you can watch what's happening. Sounds convenient, but would people actually use this service? Well, I would definitely use it, 100%. The pandemic kind of, kind of closing things. I feel like it would save us time and make us feel safer as well. Others have some concerns. No, I would not. And why not? Reason one. Your house is your personal home. I mean, you don't want all, all assorted characters coming in your house. If they live by the door, yes, it's a great service. But just to let somebody inside, I don't trust it. Eventually, one day, someone's going to get raped or murdered or something, and something bad's going to happen. So, no, I would never do that. Walmart says delivery employees will enter the house by using a one-time code. And they have to have been with the company for at least a year and go through background checks and extensive training. The in-home delivery service is around 20 bucks a month and will be completely rolled out by the end of this year. So would you use it as well? Evelyn Lee, NTD News. The deputy postmaster general is asking the government for a temporary delay from the COVID-19 vaccine mandate for U.S. Postal Service employees. The mandate requires USPS workers to either be vaccinated or get a weekly test. The deputy postmaster general sent a letter to OSHA th Tuesday saying the mandate will likely cause many postal employees to quit or be fired. He suggested that with the current supply chain and staffing challenges, the U.S. cannot afford more potential setbacks to its mail delivery system. He requested a 120-day extension of the deadlines to comply with the mandate. Now, starting this year, popular payment apps like PayPal, Venmo and Google Pay will need to report payments of $600 or more to the IRS. It affects payments for goods and services, but not if you're paying family or friends for dinner, gifts, or shared trips, etc. But the move is part of the American Rescue Plan passed last March. The plan was passed by Democrats without a single Republican vote. The threshold before it was $600 was $20,000. Blockchain firm BTCS says it'll start offering a dividend 
in Bitcoin. The company says this is a first for a company listed on the Nasdaq. It says it'll pay five cents per share in Bitcoin to its shareholders. Investors can still choose to receive dividends in cash if they prefer. But shares of BTCS jumped on the news. After a whipsaw day, Wall Street ended lower today. The Dow fell 171 points, but half a percent. S&P 500 lost five points, by one-tenth of a percent. The Nasdaq today lost 19 points, also about one-tenth of a percent. And over in the Middle East, Kazakhstan is experiencing a violent countrywide uprising that reportedly started over oil prices. Regardless of how it started, the pr- protests have pushed prices even higher there. Kazakhstan is an OPEC Plus member, produces about 1.6 million barrels a day, according to Commerce Bank. Citizens protesting the rising fuel prices were even able to force out their government yesterday. Thousands demonstrated for four days in a row, clashing with riot police and enduring tear gas and stun grenades. But Kazakhstan isn't the only one suffering because of oil prices. Europe's prices are so high some energy companies there have had to borrow money heavily. Anthony's fake quarter has more. European natural gas prices are surging again. They're now over five times what they were a year ago. Europe's energy companies are now borrowing billions, signaling their financial strains amid the high prices. Sterling Burnett is a senior fellow at the Heartland Institute. Burnett says it's not unusual for energy companies to borrow money. But they're being forced to borrow more money than usual right now because uh, uh, the political situation has made the energy situation dire. Energy giant Uniper SE agreed to credit lines of $11.3 billion with its parent company Fortum and state bank KFW and has also tapped into a $2 billion credit facility with banks. Utility giant RWEAG said strong price fluctuations naturally lead to a temporarily large need for liquidity and that we have made provisions for this with our credit lines. Companies need more cash to keep up with the soaring prices. Europe is feeling the culmination of of 20 years of terrible energy uh, policy, very much driven by this green agenda. Daniel Turner is the founder of Power the Future, a nonprofit that aims to offer truth, facts and research that will enrich the national conversation on energy. Turner says Europe is now heavily dependent on Russia for natural gas. Meanwhile, Russia has cut its exports, raising prices and hurting Europe even more. Now Russia has this power over uh, continental Europe. It doesn't have to be this way, but to reverse it, you need to make these thoughtful and, and courageous political decisions. But thoughtful and courageous does not describe Western politicians right now. Meanwhile, the U.S. has become the leading exporter of liquefied natural gas, and analysts predict it will remain the leader for all of 2022. Faye Quarter, NTD News. And more cities in one central Chinese province imposed strict virus restrictions as infections there rose sharply. Official data shows the province has 64 confirmed cases, up from just four a day earlier, although they could be underestimated. One city ordered all residents to stay indoors, not leave town. Even vehicles were banned from the city's roads unless they got official clearance. The Chinese regime is trying to stamp out clusters quickly in the run-up to the Winter Olympics. Meanwhile, authorities from Xi'an apologized to a woman after public outcry. The woman lost her unborn baby after waiting outside a local hospital for two hours because she had a negative test result that had expired. Domestic and international flights into Xi'an have been suspended. So with business in China, given restrictions and COVID policies becoming ever more difficult, it seems we're delighted to be joined by American law firm Harris Bricken. We have Fred Rockerford, head chair of the international team, who spent more than a decade doing law practice in Hong Kong and mainland China. Also Adrian Cisneros, head of Harris Bracken's Mexico office, Uh, Mr. Cisneros also became the first Mexican attorney to earn a doctor's degree in law in China. Guys, great to to see you. I believe you have a webinar coming up that there's been a lot of interest on how companies can move production from China to Mexico. Fred, maybe we can start with you. You can let me know 
How are the inquiries on this? Are we seeing more people inquiring about this? And if so, what particular industries? Well, we are definitely seeing, and first of all, Paul, thank you for the opportunity once again to talk to you uh, about China-related uh, topics, and a pleasure to be here with, uh, with Adrian. But to answer your question, yes, we are seeing increasing interest in uh, relocating from China to other manufacturing destinations, and more broadly, in, in relocation. This is not something new, I should say. Uh, we've been seeing this trend uh, for, for several years now, although things have certainly picked up over the course of the, of the pandemic. And it is something that we're seeing across industries. Obviously, the companies that are most interested in looking for alternatives are those who manufacture in China, but within that uh, set of companies, we are seeing interest uh, from, from different, uh, different sectors. What are the main reasons people are giving, Fred? Well, this, uh, the, the rationales for, for these um, decisions has been evolving, although there are some, some common threads. If, if you go back, let's say, five, six years, the concerns were, were mainly related to rising costs in China. And also, we were beginning to see the first companies who had, if you want, had, had been caught up in the bandwagon and thought, okay, China is the place where manufacturing is taking place. But over time, they reassessed that and they found that for their particular business model, being in China was not necessary. And in fact, in, in some cases, presented difficulties that they sought to avoid by, by going elsewhere. As the trade war started and, 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 and uh, intensified, then the focus shifted to the impact of the tariffs. For, for a lot of companies, the, the tariffs were too much of a, of a burden uh, and they wanted to look for alternatives so that their products wouldn't be made in China and as such wouldn't be subject to, to tariffs and other uh, trade measures that have been, have been put in place. And then with the pandemic, we've started uh, seeing yet another shift where now companies are concerned with supply chain issues, they're concerned with, with shipping, they're looking at the bigger picture, they're concerned about their long-term resiliency if they rely on China for their for their products, both from a geopolitical standpoint and also from a from a practical one, given the distance between between the the, the two countries. And Adrian, on that point, Fred mentioned about pricing increases in China. I assume Mexico is even at least a little more expensive. We we do have geographical advantages in Mexico. We also have, I believe, the new. United States, Mexico, Canada trade agreement, the US MCA. What what has this played? What role has this played for Mexico in attracting some of these companies, do you feel? It has played a pivotal role because uh, before the pandemic, uh, as Fred correctly pointed out, uh, this tr uh, this near shoring trend uh, had already begun, uh, begun touching Mexico. But uh, for instance, if you, if you talk to Chinese companies, uh, looking at Mexico as a potential manufacturing destination, they were mostly using Mexico as the platform to, uh, for expansion into other Latin American countries. What is happening nowadays is that they are trying to uh, to, to use and not, uh, the USMCA primarily, but also other free trade agreements of which Mexico is a party, to enter the various markets for, uh, uh, for uh, from which shipping from China is no longer affordable. So uh, this this trend has been uh, has been picked up by 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 Western companies themselves, starting with Western companies that were manufacturing in China, and that are for the first time looking at Mexico uh, as a uh, as a as a new destination for the for their manufacturing facilities. And very quickly, Agent, you spent a lot of time in in China. I, I assume you understand the government there extremely well. Are they aware of this trend towards South America taking some of their um, manufacturing and business, for want of a better word? And is there any kind of conflict on a governmental level, do you feel? I believe that nowadays there is a, there, there is a strong American pressure on both the, Mexican, uh, both the Mexican government and the Mexican private sector to uh, close ranks 
and uh, and truly and truly push for uh, for North America as a manufacturing powerhouse. Before the pandemic, uh, it was uh, it was a matter of common concern, myself included, even before before I joined Harris Bricken, that uh, that Mexico was trying to reach out to China. Uh, and trying to take companies there without a clear strategy, uh, strategy in mind. Nowadays, nowadays the strategy is clear. Even the Mexican president a couple of weeks ago, right before, right before the end of the year, stated that uh, that it had instructed all the relevant agencies to come up with a uh, with a strategy called Mexico Plan or Plan Mexico in, in, in Spanish, that that is meant to further integrate Mexican industries. Uh, 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 to its American and Canadian counterparts. Adrian, Fred, really appreciate it. Thank you both. We'll talk soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. With that, we'll take a quick break, but still to come. A smart face mask that makes it easier to communicate. What's so special about it, and when can you get one? And a European company turning coffee grounds into shoes is even planning to expand into a sportswear company. That and more coming up in NTD Business. just clear as day. The media, whether it's broadcast, cable, or print media, has become extremely biased. And I started looking online for alternative ways to, to get information. And I saw an ad for a free trial. And I looked at it and I said, Epoch Times? I mean, come on, this is end of days type of stuff? I mean, what are they gonna be talking about here? And I said, well, it's a free trial, let me dig in. Is it giving me both sides? Is it giving me an objective point of view here? I have looked for opportunities to see where they might be biased, and I don't find it. It has given me a level of trust in media that I didn't think I'd ever get back. I love the Epic Times because it has renewed uh, my faith in the idea that a reliable, responsible, non-biased source of information is available. And I can say that I love it because of that. Secure, the true solution for your digital privacy and security. Secure is a private and secure messaging and email solution hosted in Switzerland using military grade encryption and Swiss privacy laws, giving you true privacy. Secure is 100% private and does not collect or sell any of your personal data. Secure's Helix technology connects you securely to our Swiss servers without the need of a VPN, guaranteeing privacy and security for all your communications. Secure Messenger doesn't require your phone number or any personal data that hackers target. Chat by Invites allows you to chat privately and securely with anyone outside of your secure network without the need for others to download Secure. Secure Send offers you a private and secure way to email anyone outside of Secure. You won't find this level of privacy or security on any other email or instant messaging application. Visit secure.com. Regain and protect your privacy today. Welcome back. Razor is unveiling a face mask with a microphone and a speaker that can amplify your voice. The Zephyr Pro runs, ab uh, runs about $150 and also has an N95 grade filters to protect against COVID-19 and internal fans. Company says it goes on sale later this year. And Taco Bell lovers can soon get a discount when they prepay for their daily fix. The fast food chain is rolling out a subscription service called the Taco Lovers Pass. The pass is $10 and then with it, cu customers can get one taco a day for 30 days. A variety of tacos are offered with a subscription, including soft tacos, crunchy tacos, and popular Doritos tacos. Customers can sign up for the Taco Lovers Pass starting today, but only if they are members of the Restaurants Rewards program and have downloaded its app. 
And one company in Finland is taking its coffee in a most unusual way. Footwear firm Renz says it created waterproof sneaker made from coffee waste in an attempt to lessen the environmental impact of used coffee grounds. Anthony's Errol Rhodes has the story. The International Coffee Organization says Finnish people consume more coffee than any other nationality. This prompted Finnish footwear firm Renz to produce shoes partly made from used coffee grounds. They've raised over £600,000 for the project, which they say will significantly reduce coffee waste sent to landfill. So after you drink the coffee and uh, you know throw coffee grounds away, after you boil it and throw it away, we uh, actually took it and uh, mixed it with uh, recycled plastic pellets uh, made from used water bottles. And uh, uh, so we create something called coffee polyester yarn. So it is actually the, um, the, uh, you know, the majority of the uh, upper part of our shoes is made from those coffee polyester yarn. It's estimated 6 million tons of used coffee grounds are sent to landfill every year. Renz says a pair of its first-generation original shoes contain about 300 grams of coffee waste, the equivalent to 21 cups of java. The coffee waste is sourced from major convenience chains in Asia. The shoes are then made at a factory in Vietnam, one of the world's largest coffee producers. The company says its trainers are sustainable. In the market, like sustainable uh, products was really popular. Um, the, well, what we see as a problem is that like those products just not made for the young people, and the way that they s selling the products is like, hey, use us or else the plant is going to die. Uh, we don't like the approach. We want to be a brand where it's like, yeah, we make sustainable products, but they are cool. They have like, really cool functions. People can actually use them. While they are part made from recycled materials, there are associated environmental impacts, such as shipping the finished products. For now, sustainability comes at a high price. A pair of the company's latest footwear costs around £80. The company's early success prompted them to plan other clothing, becoming a sustainable sportswear brand in its own right. Earl Rhodes, NTD News. Pretty cool. That's the latest business updates for today. You can still catch Entity Evening News with Chenny Wu starts at 6.30 p.m. Eastern. For Entity Business, it's all for today. Thank you for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching us on YouTube. Did you know YouTube only keeps selective videos on its platform? So if you want to make sure you get the full picture, just subscribe to our newsletter. Go to newsletter.ntd.com and sign up. It's free.